Hello and God bless you young people. My name is Reverend Jared Reed Smith and I'm a minister here at the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church. I am so excited to bring you. This is our last Sunday school lesson in the year of 2020. Our last Sunday school lesson in 2020. It's been my pleasure to bring you these Sunday school lessons and I can't wait to send you some more wonderful Sunday school lessons uh, in the year of 2021. Before we get started, let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for these young people. Thank you to Lord that they continue to study your word throughout this year. Lord, bless them like only you can in Jesus name. Amen. Now, young people, this our last Sunday school lesson for 2020 brings us to John chapter one. John chapter one, starting at verse 43 and it's verse uh, verse 43 through 51. John chapter one, verse 43 through 51. Our lesson topic is Jesus chooses two followers. Jesus chooses two followers. And then our golden text, I always like to read that for you, comes from verse 45, John chapter one, verse 45. And it says, Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Now, not going to be very long. It's not a lot of scriptures in our text today. I just want to bring out one little theme uh, real quick, and then we'll be done actually for today. I know a lot of y'all can't believe that. It's going to be a short lesson today. But in our text today, we're actually going to pick up in a lesson that we had about a week or two ago. And in that lesson, we talked about the testimony of John the Baptist. Some of you all may remember that. It was the testimony of John the Baptist. Testimony means his message, what he was telling others. Uh, you know, and so what I told the older group, I do their recording, I told them that consistency, and I wonder if anyone knows what the word consistency means. Anyone? Yeah. So it means the same message, the same thing. So I, I can't say that God is good on Monday and then say God is mean on Tuesday. Uh, same way with John the Baptist. John the Baptist on one day can't say there, behold, look, Jesus Christ, the behold, the Lamb of God. I can't say behold, the Lamb of God and, and all those great things on Monday. And then the next day say, there go that guy. There go that guy coming again. And see, what we find is John the Baptist had a very consistent message. It was very consistent. And I want y'all to see that. So we're the reason why we're not going to be very long, because we're going to actually really review about two weeks ago. In verse 35, if you have your Bibles, in verse 35, on the very next day, uh, where actually, we're going to start with verse 29. Verse 29, John chapter 1, verse 29 the, the, the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Now notice, remember on a couple of weeks ago, I told you, John the Baptist was saying, look, there he is. Here he comes, the Lamb of God. And there were people that were around John the Baptist. There were people that were around him that were listening to him. And then according to verse 35, the very next day, again, it says, verse 35 says, again, the next day after John stood, meaning John the Baptist and two of his disciples, verse 36 says, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he says, behold, the Lamb of God. It was consistent. It was consistent. It was the same message. It was consistency. That was exactly what he had said the previous day. Now, he didn't say all of it, but he said the very important part. He says, behold, the Lamb of God. Behold, this one that is coming. This is Jesus. Behold, the Lamb of God. He was consistent. He was so consistent that look what happens. He had two followers. John the Baptist had two followers. Y'all remember this? I'm kind of just rehearsing last about two weeks ago's lesson, but he had two followers and we know that they to be that them, uh, they are Andrew and then another one by the name of John. Andrew and John were following him. And as a result of John speaking up and speak, uh, uh, and talked about Jesus, they left John and they went to go follow Jesus. 
Well, you say, well, that's rude. I thought they were supposed to be with John the Baptist. Why did they leave and follow Jesus? Well, that's what they're supposed to do. We're supposed to lead others to Jesus Christ. We're supposed to tell others about Jesus Christ. So they not so they leave what they used to do and they want to follow Jesus Christ. So what happened? Andrew follows Jesus Christ. So Andrew gets to know Jesus and he tells his brother, he tells his brother Simon about Jesus. And y'all know, as a result, when you know, when you find Jesus, then your life changes. So, so in our lesson today, we see the similar situation. Another day has followed now. And now we see that Jesus has gone into, according to verse 43, he's gone forth into Galilee and he finds a person by the name of Philip. He goes and he finds a person by the name of Philip and he gets to know Philip and, and he goes to Philip and he says two words. Look at verse 43 and they should be in red letters, uh, red uh, writing in your Bible. He says, follow me. He says it just like that. He goes, he finds Philip. This is a little bit different than uh, Andrew and John, right? They see Jesus coming and they go to follow Jesus. In this situation, according to the text, it says that Jesus finds and he goes and he finds Philip and he says to Philip, follow me. And what, what is so great about this now, Philip was in a certain place and what did Philip do? Jesus went to go find, or he found Philip, and he says, follow me. And as a result, we believe that Philip follows Jesus. But as also, as a result, Philip went to go get someone else. Philip went to go get Nathaniel. We believe his name is Nathaniel. He goes to tell Nathaniel, we found him, verse 45. We found Jesus. We found the one that they've been talking about. The same one that the prophets and everyone have been talking about. Y'all tell me, what did Philip do that is so great? Does anybody understand it from the text? Jesus found Philip. Philip follows Jesus. But Philip didn't just follow Jesus. He went, he went to go get someone else. Just like Andrew did, right? Remember, Andrew went to go follow Jesus and to go learn about Jesus. But in the meantime, after he had learned about Jesus, he went to go get his brother. And he, tell, he told his brother, we found Jesus. We found the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Philip does the same thing. He goes and go gets Nathaniel. And he tells him, we found him. Now, let's be very clear. I didn't really say this with the adults, but it's not that Jesus was lost. I, I don't think I had to say that to the adults. I would have brought that out. Jesus was not lost. And so it wasn't so much that they found Jesus. They, they didn't find Jesus. It's just that they had met Jesus. They have met Jesus. They met the one that they've been talking about for all these years. The prophets all in the Old Testament have talked about him and they found Jesus or they met Jesus. So Philip goes and he follows him. No problems. But they, when he gets to Nathaniel and we're just about done, Nathaniel comes to Jesus and Nathaniel is kind of like, Jesus. See, it's kind of that thing I told you a couple of weeks ago where John the Baptist knew Jesus, but he didn't know Jesus. John the Baptist knew Jesus because he kind of grew up with Jesus, right? They were cousins. I, we went through that lesson about two or three weeks ago. He knew Jesus, but he didn't know Jesus. If that had to be revealed to him that, behold, this is not just my cousin coming. This is the Lamb of God. This is not my cousin. He's still my cousin, but this is more than just my cousin coming. This is Jesus, the Messiah, behold, the Lamb of God. He could have said, hey, here comes my cousin. That's what we do. But what he says is, here comes the Lamb of God. And so Nathaniel, he did not believe at first because... This Jesus was born in not a very good part of town, a place called Nazareth. And so he asks a question. He says in verse 46, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? People look down on him because he was from Nazareth. People look down because he was associated with the people of Nazareth. But we know that Jesus, as a result, uh, as a result, Jesus 
uh, was from Nazareth, when we understand that, but that that Jesus was from somewhere else that was far better than anything on this earth. Jesus was from heaven because he was God's only begotten son. And so what did Jesus do? Well, just to end the lesson, Nathaniel goes to him and, and Nathaniel says, well, you know, can anything good? And, and Philip says, come and see. Come and see. If you don't think that anything good can come out of Nazareth, if you don't believe that this person is who he really is, come and see. Young people, that's my that's mine for you uh, to tell others. You know, when you're out and you're witnessing, when you're telling others about Jesus Christ and they say, well, I don't believe in that Jesus. I don't believe in God. And I don't believe that he could do this. I don't, Just come and see. Just come and see. Invite them to a Zoom call when we have our Bible study. Send them this YouTube or this Facebook link. Send them, uh, share with them something about how God has changed your life. Just tell them, come and see, come and see. So Nathaniel talks to Jesus and Jesus knows more about Nathaniel than Jesus, than Nathaniel thought he did. As a matter of fact, before Nathaniel even got to Jesus, Jesus had already known what he was doing earlier that day. And so Nathaniel believed uh, that Jesus who was who he said he was. But Jesus tells him like this, and this is the last part of the lesson. Jesus tells him, you, you're just believing on me because I knew what you were doing earlier. Well, guess what? You're going to see some great things happen. Some greater things are even going to happen. Way greater than me knowing what you were doing earlier. Why? Because Nathaniel was going to be a part of something that was going to be totally awesome. What, what, what was he about to be a part of? Well, not that he was going to be a part of it as if he died on the cross, but he was going to see what Jesus did throughout his years. He was going to see all the healings, all the miracles. He was going to see how this same one, Jesus Christ, was going to die for the sins of you and for me. And so they became followers of Jesus Christ and they continued. But you saw the example of how they, that's how faith came in. People had to tell others about Jesus. And that's our job. Our job is to tell others about Jesus. We can't keep it to ourselves. Andrew told his brother, uh, Philip told Nathaniel, you have to tell others so they can come to know Jesus Christ. And they might ask you, they might ask you, man, can he really do something for me? Can he really change my life? Can he really do all these awesome things? Well, your response needs to be just like verse 46, come and see. And I promise you, when you lead others to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ can take it from there. He can change their lives and he can do the same thing he did for you. He can do it for them. God bless you, young people. May God keep you is my prayer. I wish you nothing but the best in this coming new year. Can't wait to see you on the other side in 2021 as we continue to share our Sunday school lessons. Don't forget about our Wednesday uh, 6 p.m. check-in and our Bible study. I'm enjoying the book of Genesis with you all. I invite others to join us. Please join us on Wednesday at 6 p.m. And then, of course, worship with us at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer.